All right, y'all, what is up and welcome back. Thanks so much for tuning in today. And in today's video, we headed down to Galveston Bay to do a little bit of wade fishing. Now, I haven't been wade fishing in quite a while and I was super excited to hop back in the water and we were specifically targeting speckled trout. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it was a tough day and our plan just didn't work out. We could not find the speckled trout, but we did end up catching quite a bit of another species of fish, which I'll let y'all find out in the video, but another kind of fish that a lot of people kind of consider trash. It's not a really sought after fish in the area, but we did in fact bring some home and do a little catch and cook on them. So I hope you all enjoy the video. Once again, thanks for tuning in and let's go ahead and roll it. So we are making our way to the edge of this current right here. I do have to say it feels good to be back wade fishing. It's been quite a while here. And today we're just starting out with a 1 8 ounce jig head and a down south plum with chartreuse tail. We got some 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, and then for my setup, I got a Waterloo HP Lite, a Shimano SLX DC, and some 30 pound braid paired on that. This is typically what we're gonna be throwing every time I wade fish. So, our plan is just to walk out here, get close to the edge of this current, just cast out into the middle of it, and let our lure just drift down with it. We're just hoping that we're gonna feed it right into a trout's mouth. That's what we're trying to catch trout, redfish. I would say flounder, but the season's closed, so. Trout and redfish, but usually out here it's just mainly trout. So let's see if we can get on something. Ooh, there's a fish right there already. Just little pops pulling it up off the bottom and then letting it slowly drift down in the current. So we're gonna keep doing that and hopefully we'll hook into something nice. Guys, feels like something little. I think it might be a sand trout. There seems to be a lot of sand trout out here right now. And it is. Hey, if we were starving, that would be a great fish to eat. Sand trout are actually very good to eat. And these are Pretty nice sized sand trout, nothing wrong with that. He's pumping blood, but he should be all right as long as we get him back. There he is, he's gonna release. Yeah, it seems to be a lot of sand trout because I'm getting a lot of short strikes out here. Those things are always fun to catch, but they do get annoying whenever you can't even reel in or whenever you can't even work your lure one time without getting hit by them. So we're just gonna keep on looking for the specks and hopefully we'll run into them. If we don't catch them up here in this main current right here, because basically what we have is just this little gut from this current. There's a bite. Oh, oh, oh. man, I almost think I got cut off. No, he's there. But we have this little gut made from this current here. And there's a bunch of oyster around it. And it comes up on an oyster bed out here where I'm casting. A lot shallower, about knee deep. There's a nice one. Oh, is he on? Oh my gosh, that thing slammed it while I was sinking. Wow. But then on the other side of this oyster bed out in front of me, it drops off. Not like a straight ledge or anything, but kind of just gradually drops off into the intercoastal. And a lot of times when you're not catching the trout up here, especially in these cooler months, you'll catch them out there. So we'll fish up here for a while, make sure that none of these bites I'm getting are in fact speckled trout. And if it is just a bunch of sand trout, then we'll move out there and see if we can find some specks. But hey, I'm having fun just catching fish. Getting bites is always fun. There's a fish. That's a sand trout. Oh, he came off. Man, guys, y'all can always tell whenever it's a sand trout because you can feel them almost vibrate. You can feel their head shakes, but small head shakes, like And they don't always come up to the top and head shake. A lot of times, you know, speckled trout will come to the top and shake. Sand trout will stay down and shake. Oh wow, that was already one right there. I apologize if y'all can hear this real squeaking. I don't know what's going on with that. It just started. Ooh, jumping trout. Is that a sandy or a speck? It's a dark colored sand trout, I'll tell you that. Unless it's a little speck. No, it is a little speck. There we go, nice. Hey, get your hands wet before touching these guys. Helps keep their slime coating on them and don't handle them too much, but pop that hook out. A little speckled trout, that's what we're after, but only about three to four times that size. It's cool though, that means that they're out here. Find real weird. This is just gonna be a sand trout. What is that? Oh, it's a big sand trout. Wow. That's 
a nice sand trout right there, guys. And we are actually desperate today. We have not caught a speckled trout yet, so we are going to be eating some sand trout. Sand trout are great to eat as long as you do not freeze them. At least that's what everyone says. I know some people say they can freeze them, but generally everyone knows they get mushy whenever you freeze them, so just eat them fresh. Let's see what else we can catch. I did, in fact, switch up to a Lil John, just clear with salt and pepper flake. It's a little bit smaller than the down south, so hopefully I don't miss as many fish, but let's see what happens. There's one. Feels like another decent one. We'll see. Decent. I'll take that one home. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take this guy home. I'll make a sandwich. And the good thing about sand trout, y'all, is that they have no size limit and no bag limit either. So you can keep as many as you want at any size that you want. But we're trying to only keep ones that are maybe over 10 to 12 inches. Under that, it's, I don't think it's worth my time to fillet them. So, the good news is that there is quite a few nice sized ones in here today. Wow! That should be a nice size one, the way that thing hit. Ooh, don't come off. Oh, no, he's not. He's little. But there are a few nice size ones in here. And that's always fun. Little guy. I hope that was on camera, guys. Man, this sand trout felt huge. Just came skyrocketing out of the water. Oh, oh. It's another one for the stringer a little bit small but i got my finger up in his gills so there's no point in letting him go he's probably gonna die so there we go man that guy hit it real hard i thought i had a maybe a speck or maybe a flounder on but it's always crazy how hard sand trout will hit it they always trick you into thinking you have something bigger so we've just been hopping along up and down this current chasing this school of sand trout Whenever we stop catching them in one area, we just move 20, 30 yards to the other side and start catching them again. But right now we're working our way out a little bit and we're up real shallow. You can see it's only knee deep. We're up on top of this, on the edge of this reef, kind of up on some shell right here. Oh, you think that sand trout right out the water. But we have definitely found a big school of them right here. So we're back at the house. We have all of our sand trout right here. And as you can see, we already filleted up most of them, but I saved one to show you how we're going to do it. Now it is commonly known that sand trout are just softer than speckled trout and that's why a lot of people don't keep them and also because of size difference. As you can see this thing is a lot smaller so you get a lot less meat per fish. But they're so abundant and so easy to catch that heck you can fill a cooler with 100 of them in about an hour. So we're going to go ahead and flay this up. And all we're going to do is just like a normal trout, cut down, turn your knife and we're just going to go down the back. Get over that swim bladder and that's it. And to do the other side, I like to go backwards. Helps you miss a little bit less meat, in my opinion. Makes it easier. Cut up to the head. Down just like that. We're done. And then we just got to take them out to skin. So lay your fish right on the edge of the table. And their skin is pretty thin. We're just going to cut a little notch in there so we have somewhere to hold. Turn our knife. Get that knife flat. Grab your skin and pull. Now we're just going to cut these bones out. And to me, this looks a lot like a crappie filet. Not as white, but around the same size is what I mean. And there we go. Boneless, skinless, sand trout filet. And today we're going to be making some sand trout po' boys. So we'll see you in the kitchen. Well, let's go ahead and get right into making these po' boys. Now, this is a really simple recipe because all that we have to do is just fry our fish. Other than that, everything is ready to go. We got our bread, we got our lettuce, we got our tomato, and we have some tartar sauce. So our only job in this whole recipe is to get this fish nice and golden brown. All I did was I took my fish and I put it in some mustard and some hot sauce, mixed that around so it was really coated, and then I added it into my breading mixture. Now, what I made was about 70 to 75% cornmeal and then 30% flour and then just a lot of Cajun seasoning. So here we have our piece of fish right here. We're just gonna dump it in some hot oil. 
I got my oil set at about 375 and whenever I put in all the fish, it'll drop it down to around 350. And that's a perfect temperature for frying. Should take about three to four minutes to get golden brown and then we'll be ready to make our po' boy. So that is a perfect golden brown right there. We're gonna go ahead and take it out, throw in another batch and then we'll get ready to put these po' boys together. But that's it y'all. Batter up your fish, dunk it in the fryer four or five minutes later and you're ready. We'll see you on the kitchen. Well, we got a whole plate right here of some beautifully fried sand trout. Let's go ahead and build this sandwich. So all I got is some French bread right here. And this thing was huge. So I had to cut it in half and then I toast it for a little bit just so it's not as doughy on the inside. And all we're gonna do is just lay in some tomatoes to start. So we're just gonna lay them down just like that. You put whatever you want on this. I just like to keep it simple. Some tomatoes, some lettuce, we're good to go. Get in our shredded lettuce right here. And I did put this in the freezer beforehand, guys. If you're not doing that, man, you've got to try it out. It's gonna make it extra crispy, but put in our lettuce, maybe a little bit more, and then we're just gonna take our awesome fried fish, lay it on top of that. And as y'all know, this is delicious with fish, oysters, shrimp, any type of seafood you can fry, put it on here and it's gonna be great. So we'll do it right there. And then we're just gonna take our sauce, and I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, I completely forgot about the sauce. I was gonna put it on underneath everything, but now that I forgot, we're just gonna have to put it on top. That's a big mess up, but it's gonna be all right. We're gonna go ahead and just pour it right over top. And it doesn't look as good as it should, but it'll be all right. Make sure we get enough on there because all that bread is gonna be pretty dry. Okay, and now with the sauce mess up and everything, it may not be the prettiest looking po' boy you've ever seen, but hey, super simple, really quick to make. Took us maybe 20 minutes of time to cook this thing and we're ready for a nice dinner. I don't know how I'm gonna take a bite of this, but we're gonna go ahead and grab a plate and then tell you how good it is. Let's see if we can get a bite going. I'm just gonna squeeze it all together. Okay, and this is gonna be ugly, but I'm about to cut the camera for a second, but let's go ahead and try it out. Mm-hmm. Whenever I think of a seafood po' boy, that is exactly what I'm imagining. That is amazing, guys. Hey, y'all definitely make sure to give this a try. Really easy to make, super convenient and delicious, but I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're not already. If you are, like always, guys, I thank you so very much. That's it for today's video, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.